Hey guys, this is Balu from Balu Prime and once again welcome you all back for an exciting tutorial. In this tutorial I will show you how we can add CGI flying dragon into the live footage with the help of Adobe After Effects using Element 3D plugin. So hope you guys will find this tutorial useful but before going to that if you end up liking this video please click on that like button to share this content and if you are new to this channel consider subscribing my channel and support me. And by the way if you like short 3D simulation videos you can check out my second channel link in the description. So now without any further ado let's start today's video so here we are in after effects now let's start this by importing our footage onto this project panel so further right click on this project panel import select the file or else we can directly drag and drop our footage onto this project panel so now you can select your footage and drop it onto this composition icon here so that it creates a composition with the footage properties so let me disable the sound so now if I press 0 on the keyboard for preview, you can see we got this shot which I filmed using my device and I intentionally kept the camera movement here. So in this kind of footage where the camera is not steady and if you want to add any 3D objects in this kind of scenes, first we need to track the camera. So for that, let me select the footage, come to this window options and enable this tracker. And from here, click on this track camera. Make sure we have selected the footage which we want to track and later click on this track camera. So it starts analyzing our footage and gives us some tracking points when it is done. So here our tracking is done and we got some track points here. So first of all, come to this advanced options, expand this one. So first check this average error. So anything less than one pixels would be fine here i got this 0.55 pixels so this is okay so if you got pixel error more than one just enable this detailed analysis option it will track once again and that may reduce the average error value okay and secondly we need to check this short type so for default it is set to fixed angle of view so if I work on this kind of file where I left this to fixed angle of view, we may face some issues. So let me show you first that one. So if I select this track points here like this, right click and create a solid end camera. And if I come to this track solid options, if I press P on the keyboard, you can see the Z position value. It is like 86,048 points. That means it is far away from this camera. So if we import any 3D objects in this scene, we will not be able to scale up or match to this scene. So in this kind of situations, we need to change that setting. So let me undo this one. So in this kind of situations, change this short type to variable zoom. So this will track once again and it will solve the camera and gives us some tracking points. So now if I select any of the track points here, and right click create and solid in camera now come to strike solid press p so now you can see the difference so these position values are not far from the camera and if we place any 3d objects those will be clearly visible here so we need to check this one so for this shot this short type variable zoom is working so i will leave this to variable zoom so after that we need to select any three track cameras or else let me undo this one so after setting this to short type, select any of the track points where you want to place the 3D objects. So this is 3D space area or this is an empty space area. So I want to place an object which is flying dragon into this scene. So I will select this track point. So let me select this track points here. Hold left mouse key and simply draw on the points here. So we got this circuit. Now right click, create solid and camera. So now we got a track 3D camera and track solid. So if I play this now, we can say our track solid will be staying in its position throughout the timeline. So it means our tracking is good. Nice. So now let's create a solid layer for element 3D. So go to this layer options, new, create a solid. Let me rename this as element, make it of comp size and hit OK. So now again, come to this window and enable this effects and presets. Now come to this effects and presets and look for element. So select this element and drop it onto this element layer. So before working on to this element plugin, make sure the files whichever we are using, it should be of OBJ or OBJ sequence. So now click on this scene setup. 
so here we got a new window open to work in elementary so in order to get the animations we want to have obj sequence so here i am using this dragon flying animation which i have downloaded from sketchfab download link in the description so i have downloaded this in fbx format so element 3d doesn't support fbx so we need to convert that into obj sequence so in order to convert this fbx to obj sequence i will be using blender so don't worry if you are new to blender this is an open source and it is easy to convert the files obj files or fbx files into obj sequence so it is of three to four steps so download blender it is free to download and after that we will get this slash screen just click on anywhere here left mouse click so we need to clear up the scene so press a on the keyboard to select everything in the scene and delete them first so now let's import the fbx file which we have downloaded from the sketchfab so go to this file options import and select this fbx and look at the file so here i got that file which is you can see this is an fbx file and import fbx so here we got the dragon but it is way small so press s on the keyboard which is scaling so press s and drag the mouse sidewards to increase the scaling of this dragon so here you can see we got our dragon so now if i move this up here you can see these are the keyframes that holds the animation so this timeline is only of 250 frames but our footage let me come to this so here our footage is of 11 seconds with 30 fps that is 300 frames so we need to have 300 frames of animation so i will increase this to 320 let it be 20 frames more so now we need to copy these keyframes and paste them here to line up the animation so select all the keyframes or else you can place the cursor here press a on the keyboard to select all the keyframes Control C to copy them. Click here for the cursor to come here and click on this jump to keyframe to select to the last frame. So 61 is the last frame here. So 61st frame got the animation. So move to 62nd frame. So from here there is no animation. So paste the keyframes. Okay. So now again press A on the keyboard to select all the keyframes. Come to the last frame move one frame forward now paste those keyframes now again select all the keyframes copy them come to the last frame move one frame forward and paste them so now we got this animation completely here so don't worry about the textures we can apply them in element 3d so now we need to export this fbx format into obj sequence so for that come to this file options export and select this wavefront obj so create a folder where you want to save the output files so here i have already created a file obj sequence and i also converted that so let me show you how to do that so create a folder to save the files so after selecting that folder make sure this export animation is checked in or else we won't get the animation we will get the object only so make sure this is enabled and frames start and end make sure it is set to the desired frame rate so here i want 320 frames so frame start will be one and will be 320 so after that click on this export wavefront obj so we will get the files collected here so here i have already converted this fbx into obj sequence so after that we can close blender now it's not required so now move on to element 3d so in order to import any object files just we'll click on this import button but to import obj sequence we should come to this file options import and select this 3d sequence so after that select the first file first obj sequence file and open so alignment let it be from bottom so that we'll get the model at the top of the grid and hit ok so now here we got our model but it is very small after that click on this normalize size option so now we can see we got the dragon here 
so it got the animation let me show you so if i move this frame offset you can see we got the dragon flying animation here so let me change this to zero so first of all let's apply texture so while downloading only we will get textures in the folder so we need to apply that texture here so expand this one select the material come to this diffuse options click on this button here and locate the texture so locate the folder where you have downloaded the files so here we got that file texture file simply select that one and open so now we can see we got texture on the dragon now hit ok fine so by default this will have some glossiness and all let's reduce that so for that again select the material click on this reflect and let me change, reduce the glossiness we don't want glossiness here so i will change this to zero okay fine so after that click on this environment tab this is important so currently this 3d model is in this environment so you can say this is the environment so here in order to make this 3d objects blend properly into the live footage we need to have an environment map of the footage which we have recorded so actually it is a 360 image which can be recorded by using a camera 360 camera or else we can use certain apps to get hdra so since i don't have those images i will use a screenshot of the footage so it will work for this so click on this environment so here we need to load that screenshot if you got 360 image it is well and good so i will load the screenshot only so let me select the screenshot so here you can see this is the screenshot of the same footage which i am using in this tutorial so simply select that one and hit ok so now our dragon is in the same environment of our footage so if you want to rotate the environment hold shift key and we can place the position also so this is the exact position because i got this pipe reference here so after that we can disable the environment so now right click aux animation and set it to channel one. so this model is in group one and we have set this dragon to aux animation channel one okay after that click on this ok button so now you can see we got our model here so if i play this now you can see we got our 3d object so now we need to match the position of our 3d object with this track solid camera layer so for this layer so for that let me select this element layer so since this model is in group one we will be working in group one so expand this one come to this create group null expand it and simply click on this create button so here we got group one null created which is associated to this dragon so now select this track solid layer press p on the keyboard copy this position values simply click on this position values go to edit and copy them now select this group one null press p on the keyboard select this position values and change so let me show you so here now the positions are not equal not the same so now select this group one null position go to edit and paste them so now the position values will be the same for both so now we can hide out this track solid so now let's adjust the position of this dragon so select the element so we got this dragon in aux channel one so come to this aux channels channel one and now we can position this dragon here so let it be here like this if you want to increase the scaling we can increase the scaling here so let it be here so if you want to rotate come to this rotation options and i think i will rotate this like this and let me animate the dragon itself so be on the first frame so i will move the dragon here and i'll make it here so let it be here like this so add a keyframe for position x y z also and also add a keyframe for this rotation and add a keyframe for this scaling also now move to the last frame now let me bring the position okay so i think this is fine so now if i play this we can say we got our dragon flying character into this live footage nice so in order to make this scene look better we need to add some shadows so here there are no shadows 
on this building so i will add shadows here so let me show you how to do that so select this element layer come to this scene setup and let's create a ground plane first and let me increase the scaling to i think thousand is fine increase the scaling so after that right click set it to channel 2 aux channel 2 so in channel 1 we got this dragon model so in channel 2 we got this plane model we got this plane model okay so after that let me rotate this here like this okay so minus 90 and let me place this here fine so now we got this in aux channel 2 okay fine i'll click on this ok button so we got our plane here now we need to adjust this with the prospect of this building so come to this channel 2 and let me reduce the opacity first so let me reduce the plane opacity a bit so now let's position this so let me move so now let me rotate this one here like this fine and let's match with the position of this building so i want to match the corners here so I think let me place this here and let me rotate this okay and also I think this is fine and let me place this here so now you can see we got the alignment properly with the wall so let's bring back the opacity so once the alignment is set properly now again move back to the scene setup select this plane expand this select the material come to this advanced settings and enable this match shadow options so you'll get only shadows visible then so now hit on this ok button once again so now we are not getting that plane visible here so now we need to add a light in the scene to get the shadows so for that go to this layer options new create a light in the scene so let it be parallel light make sure this cast shadows is enabled or else we won't get the shadows and hit ok so we got light in the scene then also we are not finding the shadows here so now select this element layer scroll down come to this render settings first of all let me enable this ambient occlusion expand this one enable ambient occlusion let me show you what is this so we can get some occlusion here so if i change the intensity to 8 you can see we got some occlusion so i will change to 4 4 is enough and now let's work on the shadows so come to this shadow options enable shadows and change this to ray traced so now you can see we got the shadows here so now we need to adjust the light so select the light expand this one come to this transform options and adjust the point of interest and position so if i move this position value we can see we can change the dragon shadow here so i think this is fine and also point of interest let it be here like this okay so now let's reduce the sharpness or opacity so for that we need to come to this element once again so scroll down and come to this match shadow options expand this match shadow and here we can reduce the opacity so i'll reduce this to 35 so i think this is dark now let me reduce to 20 fine so i think this is enough and let me reduce the intensity of light so come to this light options and reduce the intensity to 100 so i think this much is fine nice so if i play this now we can say we got our dragon flying dragon along with the shadows in this scene so in this way we can add cgi characters into our live footage using element 3d plugin in adobe after effects easily so hope you guys have learned something new from this tutorial if you have learned anything new please like share and subscribe my channel to support me so we'll meet in the next video until then signing off take care bye